our body. That's the hero of the whole thing. There is no man involved. It is man resurrecting the solar light force through kundalini energy, the twin serpent, the energy that spirals upward to light the lamp of God that taketh away the sins or the ignorance of the world, your body. The conquest of the physical man is what the fable is describing. The conquest of the physical passions, the lusts, the appetites, the hungers, it is in that conquest that you begin to resurrect the soul raw man. The force, the fable itself, is called the Odyssey. In other words, a, mo a, a movie and a, and, a, and a book was written by Plato called the Iliad. That was the whole thing. It was the initiation process. It was all cloaked in all kinds of different kinds of, uh, of, of, of symbolism and, 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 and under, under, you got to have been initiated first to know what he was talking about. The description of the struggles in the book of Revelation is fabulized into descriptions of cosmic phenomena because it refers to cosmic light code production and treats of cosmic transmolecular processes. The substance of the descriptions lies beyond the understanding of all who are not well versed in the secrets of occultism and the subtle details of metaphysics. Now listen carefully, beloved. The details of the book of Revelation, the apocalypse, as told in symbol and parable, reveals the sensations and emotions of the initiate which are experienced by the inner soul Ra man as he trembles frighteningly and goes through the various trials and ordeals of the sacred ceremony of initiation into the higher life, as taught by the masters of the ancient mysteries. Let me repeat that again. The details, the essence of the book of Revelation, the apocalypse, as told in symbol and parable, reveals the sensations and emotions of the initiate, the lamb of the, of the story, which are experienced by his or her inner soul Ra body as the initiate trembles and goes through the various trials and ordeals of the sacred ceremony of initiation into the higher life. This was what was taught by the ancient masters, the Dravidian masters. This initiation is similar to the sensations and emotions of a blindfolded candidate who is taken through the various ordeals of the ceremony of initiation into the Masonic Lodge which is done through what? Symbol and parable. So what relationship does the Masonic initiation have with Christianity, with religion, to theology, or to heaven? Not a damn thing. Same thing. Yet this is exactly what the Apocalypse or the Book of Revelations is. It's a description of the ancient masters, in, by the ancient masters, in symbol and in parable, of the strange sensations and emotions experienced by the initiate, the neophyte, as his mind and body reacts and responds to the strange frequencies, modulations, modulations and vibrations, the sensations he encounters during the various tests he must pass through the ordeals of initiation into the sacred mysteries. And this is precisely the reason why Apollonius titled his original translation of the Dravidian scroll, The Initiation of Anointed Aesos. This is the correct title. Also, these psychic emotions and physical sensations are skillfully represented as cosmic phenomena. The heavens renting, the earth, thunderous. They're all the sensations that the person going through initiation is trying to express. And they come down as cosmic phenomena, as the flashing glare of lightning, as the crashing roll of thunder, the reverberating shock of an earthquake, and the endless murmur of rushing waters. Now, from this point, we move into the deepest recesses of the mysteries of the human temple as we begin to approach the threshold of the living corporeal <coughs> world. The descriptions of these thresholds are cleverly portrayed in symbol and parable in the Dravidian scroll. The secret is that man is actually a quantified, consolidated dynamic of light that occupies matter through ever-evolving thresholds of perception and awareness. Let me get that to you again. 
The secret is, in Revelations, that if man is a quantified, qualified, consolidated dynamic of light that occupies matter through ever-evolving thresholds of perception and awareness. How man accumulates self-awareness is based on his amplification of the soul ra light sea that lays dormant within the cellular structure that presently constitutes his consciousness threshold. Let me repeat that again. How man accumulates self-awareness is based on his or her amplification of that inner soul ra seed that lays dormant within the cellular structure that presently constitutes our consciousness threshold. That is why they're fucking with the genes. The genes qualify by your consciousness development the amount of light that you bring into you in a moment's perception. When your mind is perceiving higher thought, the cells are receiving information as light and reverberating as light because everything about us is about light. So if you start qualifying information, qualifying all your perceptions through this matrix, they now know that the cell represents the threshold of your consciousness awareness. So the next target, the gene, the DNA. All the light bearers, all the small indicators of Lucifer's presence within you, the Lucifer's material. Now go back into your Lucifer uh, uh, book of, 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 the, uh, of your American uh, 666 book and look up here in your dictionary the, the title and the meaning for the word Lucifer and see that there's six other precursors with the name Lucy, Lucifer, Luciferus. Luciferin, all of them having to do with ambient reflections of light. So Lucifer has to do with light, light bearing, light exuding. To break the present corporeal agreement, man must conserve the energies that he uses <coughs> to operate the present biomechanism. Let me say that again. To break the present corporeal agreement, Man must conserve the energies, the juices, the essences that he and she uses to operate the present biomechanism. He and she must curtail the exhaustion of energies that are used up in sex, eating, and stress-related thinking. Mm -hmm. Now, that just disqualifies 99.99% .99 of the motherfuckers on the planet. Yes. <laughs> See, now when I say this shit, 20 years ago I said this shit, and, and my whole metaphysics class emptied out. Please repeat that. Please repeat it? Yes. To break the present corporeal agreement, organically, we ain't talking about sitting you in a cyclotron and shoving an electron up your ass and shooting bolts up in there to raise your kundalini that way. No, organically, to break the present corporeal agreement, man must conserve the energies that he and she uses to operate the present biomechanism. He and she must curtail the exhaustion of energies that are used up in sex, eating, and stress-related thinking. The programming of the present body consciousness must be deleted in deference to a new, more evolved behaviorism that will reawaken the sleeping solar light within each cell to begin restructuring the outer envelope in order to make it more receptive as a newly resurrected vehicle of light. How many are going to take the plunge as soon as we leave here? <laughs> <laughs> But I gotta put it down. <laughs> to understand the minds of our ancestral masters, we must understand that the ancient arcane systems of thought differs drastically from all present day schools of thought. And the primary difference was in the way the masters acquired their knowledge. They didn't go to no damn elementary school. 
And if you change the word element, mental, L, you know, the L being the high mental, and then oh, fucking with your mental, your high mental place, that's what they do in these primary schools. They learn how to take the left and the right brain of children and separate it completely so that they have the confusion and then they sit in between there and they don't want to solve the problems on both sides of your brain. Playing you both left and right hemisphere, east and west of your reality. That's what they're talking about. Got, yeah. But isn't kindergarten the best part of school where they give you all the symbols at the beginning? But here's what they tell you, it's kindergarten. What do you use kinder for? Start fires. That's where they fuck with your, your kundalini, right there. In the kindergarten. Yeah, but the, uh, the Little Red Riding Hood stories and all that, yeah. doesn't that... Uh, yeah, what they do is they, exactly, they transplant and they, again, they fertilize that garden with the illusion. They put in those stories so the children have nothing but that to refer back to. When the children don't have the stories of their own ancestors, as the backdrop to their developmental consciousness, they belong to the motherfuckers who gave them their story to begin with. Check. Check. And you got them dealing with the archaic symbols of these devils. Little Red Riding Hood, Bo Peep, Snow White. What the fuck is y'all doing to your children? Three Little Pigs. Yeah. It's bullshit. They, and then they seed your child's consciousness with that shit, sets up the fear factor and the relief factor, the, the joy and the pain, the Hegelian training starts in the kindergarten. Mm. Mm. Shit. All, all conventional Western scientists and orthodox religionists quest for knowledge based on physical senses, psychic emotions and intellectual faculty and how well these principles function in their present states of development and degeneration. Scientists attempt to enlarge and enhance the crippled scope of their own depraved senses by using microscopes, telescopes, computers, and other mechanical devices which can never, ever reach beyond the threshold paradigm of the present material world. They can only fuck around with the subtle reverberating energies that consolidate this envelope, but they can never get beyond it. The religionist and his beasthood puts his faith in ancient scriptures, which have been totally mutilated and distorted by his church, and are misleading to the masses because they are not written to be understood by anyone except the beasthood or those who are truly initiates. This is why the Dravidian scrolls cannot be interpreted by the beasthood clergy. But the metaphysician and the occultist will not be confined to the narrow limits of the four senses, nor the mental faculties. He and she understands the hyperdimensional powers of the soul Ra man on the soul Ra body, and how it is hopelessly obstructed by the imperfected instrumentality of the corporeal organism. The occultist overstands the limitations of the material garment which encases him, through which he must function, and does his and her best to self-evolve within that, to conquer and utilize all the forces and faculties that lie latent within the elixir essences of his and her body's life stream, which are the primary <coughs> sources of all of the elemental powers of his and her being. All that he and she is, has been, and ever will be, is within the essences of your body. What your body makes, what your blood titurates, is the fuel and the sources that propels this instrumentality through dimensions, through vortices, through doorways of life into your higher re reality, your higher world. By raising these essences, these blood cells, by raising their states of consciousness, and by gaining conscious control over these concealed elixir potencies. That's why the word is called secret, because it is from the word secretions. Mm -hmm. You don't see these very subtle secretions, secreting, giving you the, the
the, 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 the light code information titurates into tangible substances that your body uses and then reevaluates the physical world, taking all of what you've learned and in that sum total of your perception, bring it up into a light being that stands as the soul raw body, the soul raw man. By raising these states of consciousness and by gaining conscious control of these concealed secretions, elixirs, and potencies that aid in our corporeal evolution, the occultist and the metaphysician seeks the path to soul raw illumination and spiritual liberation from corporeal bondage. The most difficult task for the seeker of life is not so much to know as to become. Let me just say that again. To so all you left brain heavyweighted to the side who got to get more and more information, the process is not a knowing, it is a becoming. To know is easier than to become. Many know but lack the willpower to become. The metaphysician and the light rope walker. I don't call you all tight rope walkers. You all are light rope walkers. That little light that comes out of the top of your head, the cord. Light rope walker. The metaphysician and the light rope walkers know Expanding the molecular corporeal threshold begins with the conquest of debilitating pernicious habits, which then leads to a healthy body and thus an instinctive introspection and reawakening of the regenerative forces which slumber asleep deep inside civilized man's inner protoplasmic nature. It is within the protoplasm, brothers and sisters, you have the sleeping germ the sleeping seed, the sleeping key, to resurrect you from this corporeal, numb, gray, dull-ass body into a coat of many colors, mm. technicolor. Mm. Uh, we're going to get to that. We're going to start deciphering. It's going to be a little process, but I can't leave anything out. Everything will be put on there, no matter what it is, how imperfect it is, take the tape home, study it. Like the potency of the female ovum, which, when activated by the sperm, transform that glob of protoplasm into the man that is a potential divine being. This arduous path of transcendental self-conquest, the development of the soul raw man from the concealed secretions of his own embryonic nature, of his self-luminous immortal being, is the singular subject matter of the Dravidian scrolls. Let me say it again. The quest along this arduous light path to transcendental self-conquest, the development of the soul raw body from the concealed secretions of our own embryonic fluids and nature that is still left as a residual reminder of our self-luminous immortal being. That is the singular subject matter of the Dravidian scroll, which contains in symbol and parable an almost complete and detailed outline of the psycho-bio-psychophysiological resurrection through transmolecular, transcorporeal redemption. Is that a baby? I didn't even hear that. Yeah, just come in. <laughs> Got a little one in the house. All right. He agrees with everything you said. Oh, is that what that was? Yeah. Check. <laughs> so, this Dravidian scroll contains in symbol and parable an almost complete and detailed outline of the psycho-bio-physiological resurrection through transmolecular transcorporeal redemption. You are the microcosmic God. Everything contained in the universe is contained within you. Just like the macrocosmic universe the microcosmic God, which is man, has four elemental components that correspond with the four cosmic principles that comprises the world, fire, air, water, and earth. The four principles appear in man as follows. As the earth principle, it constitutes the physical body, which is interpenetrated by 
the two, the second fluidal body. And these two, the earth and fluidal body, are interpenetrated by the aerial body. And these three are energized and sustained by the solaric body, the fire body. The fourth body, which is solar electrical in its components, constitutes what is called the life principle. And is called by the ancients the ka, the noose, the ego, etc. The soul ra is the living, conscious, vital, bioelectrical force of incredible voltage, but not the electricity that you see in the form of what the physicists talk about. An aspect of this particular bioelectrical force is called by the ancient Dravidian masters Kundalini, fire by the Dravidian masters. Kundalini Shakti. And Shakti, get this, is always feminine in nature. Now, here's where you, the deal is. You don't understand what the, the secret of Lot and, 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 and uh, his wife was about. You see. The Kundalini fire is called the mother of the world. The fire force is a feminine principle. When it is raised up, salvation happens. But when it turns back in sexuality, it turns back into the basic essential materials that were the secretions. When Lot's wife looked back, what did she turn into? Yes. The story of Lot is the story of the lotus, L-O-T-U-S. And the lotus is essentially the stem. The thousand petal lotus is the final, uh, uh, the final stage of the shishunna, what is the actual opening of the thousand petal lotus that gives you, lights the lamp of God that taketh away the sins of the world. It is a polarized force, the positive phase being called the good serpent, the negative phase calling the bad. In the telestic process, or the cycle of initiation, this force weaves and permeates from within the primal substance of the auric ovum, and according to the energy it contains, causes the soul Ra to become luminous like the sun with a golden radiance. Its aura displays its opalescence. What you see in ancient Christian information or pictures, the halo around the head is a depiction of that particular soul Ra body. The psychic or moon body, or the seshep heteru, is the awareness that the soul ra functions through in the psychic realm. The soul ra functions through the feminine body, or the seshep light, or the black light, what we call the female part, the heteru, house of heru, house of the light. This is the awareness, this is how awareness is titurated through the moon body. In other words, most of your higher psychic information is not received during the day, it's received at night when the moon, which titurates the light of the sun, helps you through that ambient light, that reflected light, to open up the lamp of God, to secrete that melatonin, to secrete that essence into the pineal around three or four o'clock in the morning, to give you that energy so that you can see beyond the stars, to talk to your ancestors on other star systems. This heteru light is molecular in its structure. So there is a molecular ambience to this body light, this moon body light, but of a much more subtle and gossamer substance than the particulate elements comprising the gross uh, physical body. Gossamer meaning very ethereal, like spider webs that are blowing. All right, that's gossamer. So you have to see that the hetero body, which is the moon body, all right, that light body is of a molecular constituency, but it is made of a substance that Western science cannot see with its present technology. <laughs> the ancient Dravidian scroll was put together by people who had 10th and 13th sight. You are looking at a physical body based on these depraved instruments you call your eyes. The ancestors did not have any lights like these. They used the sun and the moon as their light. The stars as their light, organic light. Yes. So that gave them the ability to see 
the more gossamer, the more refined and subtle body that the scientists and their gross ass self can't find. They can only take it through a Krillian, uh, a Krillian photograph, which just comes up as a light and a spark, reflected light, a spark that comes from the, the, the spark of the camera itself, not from you. You see, whatever you give off as a light, then it's reflected back to the camera, and the camera takes that picture. But as far as the light itself, it can't take a picture of the light. It can only show you what is reflected back at it. But our ancestors knew that there was a physical body that was so subtle and refined that you could not see it. And they made the different parts of this body. And I went looking faithfully to try to find it and could not. They don't even have a decent description of the pineal gland in any of these books. And I searched. I searched. Now, there's another book for $500 that I got to get. <clears throat> now, that's why you all are buying these little books to get me to get these books. Okay. So I can go on with my research. Right. Now, these books, I looked in these books so that when I would be looking in the, in the Bible, looking through the Dravidian text, studying the chakras to find out if they can give me a physiological representation so that I can show you on camera what's going on, I couldn't find shit. But I did find correlations. For instance, just to show you a, a little quick shot of your sinuses. Now, how many of you remember when I told you that when you think, you think your thoughts emanate through your sinus cavities? Remember. Your thoughts emanate through your sinus cavities. And as a result, people who have a problem with allergies have a problem expressing their thoughts. Because what happens? They are usually suppressed. Ah, oh, man, that ain't shit. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so that's all they learn throughout their whole life. They don't talk like that because they are not allowed to express themselves. And this is the sinuses that deal with the higher energy, the processing. And this is why your sinuses, they're so fucked up now because the pollution in the air, just minor pollution can distort the electrical frequencies and the wave of, of pranic energies that come in as you breathe. Prana is information. But if the information gathering um, faculties are destroyed, you can't pick up the higher information. But I do want to show you this. I want you to see a top shot of your sinuses, right here, right there. And I want you to see how they're structured. All right, now you zoom in on that for those uh, who are going to get the camera. I want you to see that is a picture, a top part. They go eyeballs right there. So they're just showing you what the top part of the sinuses, what they look like. Now I want you to clock that design. And I want you to clock the cover of the Kabbalah. Mm. The Sephiroth. Yeah. Know ye not that ye are God? Yeah. That was deep because Bobby gave me this book. Bobby Henry. Because <laughs> he got to do the Kabbalah. And I said, well, I had it on the bed. And I'm looking through, I see these sinuses. Look at the picture of the sinuses. That should look familiar. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how spirit does it. Spirit take you by the head. And, and do you remember, do you, anybody who saw, here saw, um, uh, what was the name of that, Jurassic Park? Yeah. Yeah. Remember the time when the girl was sitting in the thing and he stood up and he saw that dinosaur and he grabbed her head and, and turned it? Yeah. That's what the spirit did to me. You know, it's like, you know, over here, stupid. <laughs> and I looked down and I said, the Sephiroth look exactly like the design of the, 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 the sinuses. Yes. Yes, I do. I'm glad you said that. You asked. Did I put it in here? Yes, I did. I'm going to show you a picture of the pineal gland, which is kind of jumping the gun, mother. I wanted to get to that. In fact, I think I'll hold off and show you all a little bit later on. Now, 
the ancient Dravidian scroll also, oh, let me tell you this plot. In its appearance, the moon body or the Sesh, the Sesh